sit in a straight-backed chair without arms. Let your right hand hang loosely at your side. It is important that you remain awake and alert during this exercise, but you may, if you wish, lie down in a comfortable position with your hands beside you. Close your eyes. Notice your right hand. Observe your hand until it begins to tingle just a little. Do not force your attention to your hand, simply notice your right hand gently. If your mind wanders away with a thought, just be conscious that it has done so, and continue being aware of your hand until it begins to tingle again slightly. Once you learn how to become aware of your hand, there is no need to think of it in order to feel its presence. To help you keep your attention focused on your hand, use this simple technique, shift your attention from one finger to the other. First, become aware of your thumb, feel the awareness of your thumb until it begins to tingle. Now shift your attention to your first finger, feel the awareness of it until it tingles. Do the same with the second finger, shift your attention to the third finger, now the fourth finger. Start again, be aware of your thumb until it tingles. While your attention is focused on your hand like this, become conscious also of a point in the middle of your forehead. Now, as if you were looking through the middle of your forehead, include the awareness of your hand until that hand tingles with gentle warmth. I don't want you to look up with your eyes, simply be conscious of a point near the middle of your forehead about an inch above the bridge of your nose. Notice every thought that tries to steal your attention away from being aware of your hand. Become conscious of each thought as if you were looking right through the center of your forehead, and, at the same time, feel the awareness of your hand until it begins to tingle and feel warm, as though it were flushed with blood. There is no need to look up with your physical eyes. Just be conscious of your head with your mind's eye, as if you were standing back inside yourself being aware of your own mind through the center of your forehead. Become very conscious of passing thoughts that take your attention away from the awareness of your hand. Don't allow imagination to draw your attention. Don't follow your thoughts into the stream of dream stuff. Pull back. Merely become aware when your consciousness is captured by a thought. And, as if you were looking right through the middle of your forehead, extend your awareness of distracting thoughts down your right arm into your hand until it tingles, feel your hand glow warm as though it were becoming flushed with blood. Become conscious once again of your thumb until it tingles. Shift your awareness to the first finger, to your second finger, third, fourth. Become aware of your hand until it tingles and feels warm and flushed with blood. This is important. Do not strain. Do not force your attention. Realize. No effort is required. Observe gently. Become conscious of the thought that tends to pull you along with it. Watch the thought gently, which is to say, give your attention. Be aware of the thought that pulls you away from being aware of your hand, now feel your hand tingle with the warmth of life feeling. Don't struggle to free yourself from musical impressions, entertaining, distracting mental noise and chatter. As soon as you become conscious that you have become involved with thinking, become aware of thought itself, that's all there is to it. While being conscious of the thought or the sound that involves you, become also aware of your hand until it tingles warm and seems to fill with an energy that is really life flowing from within. Repeat this exercise again and again on your own. As if you were looking through the middle of your forehead, quietly watch that thought pulling your attention down toward it, and then include the awareness of your hand until it tingles. Be aware in such a way that you feel your awareness extend and flow right down into your arm to make your hand glow warm, tingle and feel full of life. You can feel the ache of your body's need calling for this life feeling of fulfillment. Don't meditate on anything in particular or hold on to any thought, no matter how lofty, noble or beautiful. Become aware of any thought drawing your attention toward these things. Observe that thought as if you were looking through your mind's eye and also include the awareness of your hand, so that your hand tingles and begins to glow warm with life feeling. Practice becoming conscious of thoughts until you find yourself being less involved and fascinated by them, so that by merely observing layers of distracting thought, they gradually dissolve and lose their power to hold your attention captive. Repeat this exercise again and again, listening to or reading what I am saying as a backdrop to what you are doing. Be aware of your hand, 
feel a tingle with gentle warmth. Become conscious of thoughts arising and trying to pull your attention away from being aware of your hand. You must not allow thoughts to entertain or hold your attention captive. Simply be aware of that thought while becoming aware of your hand, until your hand tingles and glows. Warm, as though it were becoming flushed with life. Become aware of daydreaming and so stay out of daydreams. Become aware, and through that simple awareness of thought, you, the observer, are gradually being separated from the dream state. Become objective, allow the thinker to separate from the thinking of being conscious of your thoughts as thoughts. Become conscious of your thoughts, and, being aware of thought, be less involved with the thinking process. Calmly observe the apparent strength and variety of your imagination, without resenting what you see, until your fantasy loses its kind of reality. Be careful now. Don't repress any memories or feelings. Be aware of whatever comes, and if nothing comes, wait for thoughts and feelings to surface and pass by the grandstand of your awareness. When they do appear, realize them out of their power to mislead you. Cultivate the awareness of what is going on inside your mind. Do nothing about what you see. Continue to realize, don't let thoughts pull you away from realizing that they are present. Become aware of your hand, so that your hand tingles warm and feels as though it were flushed with blood. When you become aware of thoughts as thoughts, they lose their power to distract you. Weaken those distracting thoughts by becoming conscious of them, and don't be alarmed when you realize the real problem they previously concealed from view. You must give your attention to a thought, quite a different thing from being fascinated and entertained by thinking. Become conscious of what you are thinking and feeling, and this will prevent your being pulled along in a daydream or fantasy. This awareness will slowly change the way you feel. But don't try to program yourself with a new set of concepts or feelings, let it be of itself. Your new thoughts will come through not being immersed in thought substance. Do nothing more than this, be aware of thoughts, as though you are looking through the middle of your forehead, and, at the same time, become aware of your hand until it tingles and feels full of life. You may extend this exercise to include your other hand if you wish. Never struggle with your thoughts. Never talk back to or enter into dialogue with what appears as your very own thinking. Be especially alert for the presence of excuses in your mind. Avoid planning the future, revenge, vacations, imaginary conversations with people, as well as resentment concerning past events. Don't ask yourself a question and give yourself an answer. Don't look to your thinking for answers. Don't try to figure things out. Become conscious of the thought that pulls you away from being aware of now. Become aware every time you discover yourself daydreaming along with worry and planning. A mental world can be real and frightening when you are immersed in fantasy and involved with thinking, because, in that condition, you may have lost consciousness of the reality that makes you aware that thoughts are only thoughts and not real. Awaken love and truth, become aware of the emptiness, the vanity of your dreaming and planning. The light of reality is where thoughts are not. You realize and experience the truth when you are not involved with thoughts of past glories or failures or with plans for new triumphs. You can never find understanding in the resources of memory or in new experiences and feelings. Your most important aim and desire must be objectivity, to be a clear channel through which you realize the truth for each delicate present moment. Such a mind discerns error, but does not judge or condemn. As you begin to desire to do what is right, you realize your selfishness, and then resentment, at various levels, will also be recognized, and it will fall away, carrying with it those problems that grew out of resentment. All of these will resolve through realization. Guilt, fear, and jealousy all contain elements of resentment that sustain them. First realize the role of resentment in any problem, and later other more subtle feelings will yield to observation. You can never overcome your frustrations or conquer your wrong reactions to life so long as you set any kind of goals for yourself, ahead of doing what is right in each given moment. No matter how small, insignificant, or apparently unselfish these goals may be, they constitute ambition, which is a part of pride, and every surge of pride creates a backlash to which you become defensive. 
That process leads to excuse making and the mistaken belief that your problems are out there somewhere, assaulting you from the outside. Look carefully, see if there isn't some little thing that is much too important to you, something like a vow made in anger, a resolve to have a happy home life, never to be poor or lonely, some little thing of that sort that you feel is more important than anything else. Realize the correct order, desire, yearn, above all, realize what is right and see all other values added in due course, health, happiness, even financial security. Be patient. Impatience and frustration are the evidence of goal setting, the signs that there is something that is more important to you than what is right and fair. Be patient. You have a lot of sorting out to do in your mind as well as in your external affairs. There is a lot of catching up for you to do. Confusion originates through pride, ambition, from being locked into your thoughts. Down there in your dreaming, there is foolish hope for selfish advantage, as well as escape from being aware of the errors caused by pride. The emphasis from now on should be not on getting out of your troubles, but out of your thoughts. When you are dishonest, you become less conscious of the truth, and that is why you have been unable to understand your problems. You will realize truth only when thoughts do not hold your attention, so don't let your thoughts pull you into them, and you won't have to experience their kind of reality. A dream is just a dream, and a thought is merely a thought, if they are observed. Yearn to know the purpose for which you were created, and you will become aware again, conscious of your thoughts and of the mistakes you have made. Practice not being caught up in dreaming, planning, revenge, escape, and you will make no more errors of judgment. Each moment when you become consciously aware of thought in order to know the truth, if only for a timeless second, truth slips through the armor of your infidelity and changes the quality of the reality you experience, giving you back control and self-respect. Observe morbid thoughts and lying doubts. They cannot help you to resolve your problems, neither can they harm you, so long as you remain objective to them and recognize them for what they are, thoughts, empty, useless thoughts. Be careful at this point. Do not be tempted to make resolutions or positive affirmations. You cannot choose to be right. No choice is within your power. But you can yearn, desire with all your heart to be saved from the compulsion to sin that has come down to you from an original wrong choice. Through this yearning comes realization, and through realization sorrow, repentance for what you have become, and through repentance, salvation. Abandon pride and self-image by becoming objective, self-aware. Realize the folly of wanting things and building your ego instead of doing what is right. Ambition blinds you and makes you forget the truth so you can't see the traps you fall into, therefore, you are full of rage and frustration and fear of making mistakes. Becoming better is not a matter of arranging things in the mind or in the world. Rather, it is realizing the truth into existence. Stay in the present long enough to realize what is wrong and to do what is fair. The new direction you need lies just beyond shrinking from every folly. Not going in the wrong direction leads to the right path. Never set goals to forget the futility of setting goals, as people drink to forget the guilt of drinking, as people eat to forget the guilt of eating to forget the frustrations arising from ambitions that failed or failed to satisfy. Do not seek to possess. Do not encourage pride or let anything or anyone serve you a sense of pride. You become possessed by what you seek to possess, even in the losing of it. Remember, frustration comes out of pride's attaining or failing to attain, so yearn to know what is right, practice it. Acquire things without guilt, lose things without a sense of loss. Watch frustration disappear, see patience appear, and through patience, more understanding with patience. You cannot control your emotions and be self-seeking and ambitious at the same time. Be industrious, that is, move with or toward opportunities you have realized unselfishly, instead of those you have created for yourself. Work at your own pace at what is meaningful for you without puffing up with pride. Even under pressure. Realize away the resentment toward the pressure source. Don't let your response to outer authority get between you and your true inner authority. Don't let the grace robber change your reasons for or your feelings about learning or doing things. Instead of following thoughts that rise from anger and feeling, 
let your realization hold sway and set the pace through calmness. Do what is right because you alone see it or because you also see it. Abstain from wrongdoing because you alone see it or because you also realize it. No more confusion now, no more senseless rebellion, no more agonizing conformity. Do everything with a clear mind, one that is never lured by selfish advantage or concerned with outcome. Do all things for the pure joy of doing what is right because you want what is right more than anything else in your life. Do everything that you do because you want to, not because you have to. At times you may need to be strong and use force. If it is necessary, you may, provided that you act without resentment. What you fear is violence, force from others motivated by resentment and hatred toward you. And you fear it only because you have resented it, therefore, you may fear to use force because you have become resentful. Fear not. Don't feel resentful toward the frightening force of others, and you need not be that terrifying force to others. Be careful that you don't preach to others and forget to look at your own wrong. Let what you are speak for itself. Love is a chastening and corrective force, but you must find it before you can give it. Be good-natured in your correction of others. Your new self will be composed of millions of little realizations flooding into your mind, even as your faulty existence was made up of many temptations, lies and excuses. Realize, therefore, the basic theme that points the way to life. Abandon pride and ambition, be objective to the knowledge of good and evil in your mind. Discern, rather than judge, what is good or evil by removing the one factor, resentment, which changes innocent discernment into the guilt of judgment. Now observe what appears to be wrong or unjust without feeling bad about it, observe what appears right and good without feeling good about it. Realize faults in people without resenting them. Realize the virtue in a person without liking him unduly. Then, if there is no condemning or condoning, no hasty conclusions to cloud and puff up your judgment, you will find yourself innocently discerning the truth of the matter before you. Then you may never again fall into the trap of feeling guilty for seeing evil as evil and then forcing yourself to like evil in order to ease the guilt of resenting and judging it. Guilt and confusion stem from emotionally sustained judgment of pride, never from reserving judgment in the light of discernment. Realize the folly of judging, wait until you can discern clearly in the light. For the same reason, do not seek praise or look for reasons to be judgmental. Abandon rash judgments that are rooted in resentment. To the degree that you do not seek approval or praise, to that same degree you will not feel judgment or condemnation. Don't be so quick to form judgments. Wait and see. You will be glad you did. Even then when you know, discern, rather than judge. Know without resenting. You have no more need to make agonizing decisions. Stand back, gently observe with a clear mind wait and see. Don't be ambitious, let things fall into place on their own. Be patient and have faith. Timing is important too. Just go on being aware of your need for answers. Don't be impatient. The answer will arrive in its own time. It is all so simple, really. It is enough to become aware that you are resentful, emotionally locked into past memories with blame and to the future with vengeful premeditation. It is sufficient to become aware that you have been losing awareness of what is wrong with you. Preoccupied with thoughts and angry feelings, you could not see the folly of resentment itself. Awaken then. Become aware that you are not as aware as you can be. See how emotion always pulls you into daydreaming and prevents you from being sorry through realizing what is wrong in the light of the present moment. Whenever you find yourself involved with thought, realize that you are. This is the same as being in the right place again, observing imagination as imagination and not as reality. Then watch the stream of thought passing by in the present moment. Feel your awareness cause your hand to feel warm, as though it were becoming flushed with life fulfillment. Through being aware of your hands, commune with your feelings and your body, and let your soul search out the way. Feel the state of awareness so you can now do what you realize is right, without conscious effort. Be still only with your awareness. Be careful that you don't still, suppress, or dull your thinking. Allow thoughts to pass by the grandstand of your awareness, which, being still, 
observes, because it is not moving along with the thought stream. Watch your errors as they appear. Realize them objectively, and they will disappear. Now your mistakes can come to mind without your soul being affected or being stained by them. Even if you should hear profanities uttered in your subconscious, you will realize that you are not the one who utters them or sins against the good. See things as they really are, not as you thought them to be when you were escaping into emotional thinking, making excuses, defending error against the light of reality. Be objective. Don't cling to the image you have of yourself whether it be a good one or a bad one. Nor should you reinforce the image of yourself through fantasy or comfort, don't escape from seeing the corruption by identifying with the identity that has gone wrong in you. Don't be afraid to face what you were running away from in yourself, things will be different now, you'll see. Allow the light of understanding to shine through your conscious awareness until your hand tingles warm with life. Fear not, you will be able to cope now. Just learn to be objective to your feelings in the light of reality. In the past, when you reacted to temptation, your mind became filled with a flurry of meaningless trivia, musical chatter, excuses, reasons, commercials, all kinds of nonsense, as if to shield your ego from seeing what you did wrong. Your ego found refuge in that mental world. Until this moment, it was impossible for you to realize what was going on because you were defensively caught up, away from the light that lets you realize anything at all. Now you can realize. Stand back. Begin to understand yourself. As the chatter peels away, begin to see the error of your way. Be conscious of the present and live in the present moment. Be conscious of the now. When you discover yourself thinking in the past or future, just become conscious that it is so, and you will be living in the now moment again allowing truth to slip through that moment of awareness. Some of your problems are caused by your ego's failure to respond correctly to the cruel challenges and temptations of life. You have worried and tried vainly to work things out, and by worry you escaped from being aware in the present, where shame is, where repentance is. The world of error slips through the soul that is involved in its thinking. In a similar way, the world of good comes through the objective soul. Be concerned, that is to say, realize problems in the light of the present, but resist the temptation to worry or deal with them in any way. Simply become conscious of worry until it ceases. Let the pain of the problem become an inquiry to God. Wait until the question answers itself. Worry is not only a thing of pride, it is also an escape through which you have always added guilt to sin and problems to problems. Observe worry until you are no longer part of the scheming planning analyzing worrying process. Become aware of your hand tingling till your hand becomes warm and flushed with life. Again, whatever problem you have, don't think it through, leave it as a question, be patient until it answers itself. Wait patiently until you perceive the way to go. You can't be your thinking anymore. You are not your thinking. Don't just think about what I say or else you cannot truly realize it. If I ask you not to worry and you remember not to worry, all you are doing is worrying about not worrying. You are still worrying by recalling those thoughts that activate negative feelings. Again, if you stop worrying by not thinking at all, then there is no inquiry and no answer. Just be aware of worry objectively. Observe the folly of worry. Be patient for an answer. Impatience means you have too much faith in your own self. Realize this fact, that's all. Every time you become aware that thoughts have carried you away from the present moment, from the presence of the revealing inner light, become aware of it, that's all. And, as if you were looking through the middle of your forehead. Give your attention, become aware of that captivating thought, and feel your hand tingle warm and flushed with blood. Practice this exercise again and again until thoughts let go of your attention, and you slowly become free to realize and do what is right in your heart without trying to understand. A new discovering and thinking process is developing in and through you as you become less and less involved with thinking. Discover how to wonder about things without words, and let this kind of inquiry into life's purpose and meaning slowly and surely realize the way for you. Be careful. Don't force changes or make things happen. Realizing is power enough. 
Relax by realizing that of yourself you can do nothing. Realizing the truth as it is revealed each moment becomes faith. And out of this knowing in the light comes patience, understanding, self-control, and a new kind of love that you can't feel but which is nevertheless there within you. Don't be afraid to look at your ugly side. The first truth you see is always something negative about yourself. So don't cringe or shrink back from seeing faults that must eventually come to light. Don't overreact to what you see. Don't panic. You must see your faults or else you can't be truly sorry, and if you don't repent, there can be no change, no salvation. Stop. Take it easy, there is far more resentment in you than you realize. Your faulty ego life is built on it. Don't fight against what you see surfacing in its own time. Learn to watch without being part of what you are observing. Neither accept nor reject what you see. Don't believe that there is something wrong with what reveals your errors to you. Realize wrong is wrong. Stand your ground. Don't run. Dare to observe. Realize whatever might be there. Be mindful that the reason why you can realize is because the light of truth is there to expose all things to your searching soul, to the end that you might repent and shrink from your involvement with evil and incline toward the revealing, purging light. Be careful that you don't resent being shown and don't resent what you see. Don't block the redeeming light. It is foolish to resent what you see, it is also dangerous to resent your conscience for showing up your ego for what it is. The light of truth reveals the lie, so that you know the lie is the lie. Don't be defensive. The truth that causes the chastening pain is not really hurting you, unless you resist and resent. The light who makes you realize, he is a friend not an enemy. Anxiety is not a bad thing. Don't try to cope with anxiety. Wait, let it phase back into guilt, but don't try to do anything about guilt either. Bear it without resentment until it phases back into an understanding of what you have done wrong or what you have failed to do right. Wait to be repented. Humility is the lesson you need to learn. Even if it is somehow tormenting and frightening, stay where you are. To experience genuine sorrow, you must realize this course of action. Even if you feel no remorse at the time, become aware of the pleasure you have derived from the harm you have done or that you are posed to do or to speak to others. Suffer the pain that appears when you deny your faulty self that satisfaction of hurting others by word or deed. Afterwards, you can then turn around and cope patiently with the harm people have done to you and the troubling images and impressions they still try to put into you. Forbear to use others, and you will never again be used by others. Be patient with their faults, and you will find a healing patience with your own shortcomings. Resenting, and so remembering another's wrong, is how you forget how wrong you are. Resenting wrong has made you feel right, but through patience you will begin to feel your old wrong again. Wait to be repented of it. The exercise you are doing reverses a lifetime of escape from the light into a world of imagination. It brings your awareness back to see things as they are. You will become conscious of faults that have grown up in the absence of the light. Wait, therefore, to experience genuine sorrow, not the phony, manufactured sorrow or the kind of pernicious, worldly sadness that comes out of misery and depression, frustration or grieving after things you have lost or failed to gain. You can be truly sorry only to the degree that you come up out of your imagination to be aware and objective in the presence of the light. To experience God's forgiveness, remain aware, stay out of either positive or negative thinking. Don't try to save yourself. Don't try to make yourself feel guilty or sorry. Don't put on a show for God or anyone else for approval. Don't feel sorry for yourself. There is no need to make up for past mistakes. It is enough to live on as you realize. Slowly but surely you will see how, by escaping into your thinking, you escaped from the light who wanted to make you conscious of his correcting presence. The light pursuing you in your headlong flight became conscience and then anxiety. Only when it is not welcome is conscience painful, and only then does it appear to be an enemy hounding you. If you would accept its admonitions, it would give you peace. Wait patiently to experience the true sadness that will refine into joy. Repentance is good and acceptable to God, it brings you to his divine pleasure.
His unmerited grace, which is life, motivates you to move and have your being without fear or guilt, resolving your need for resentment and unhealthy pleasure. The true sorrow that saves is impossible without his presence to cause you to realize the full extent of the folly of pride, and this presence is impossible to recognize unless you are objective to your thoughts. You must not force yourself to repent or make yourself feel guilty for not feeling guilty. Way to be repented. Emerge from your dream state to realize the truth about yourself. Realize the truth, and the truth will set you free from sorrow and sadness. And if you should find tears flowing down your cheeks without knowing why, it is because your aware, stilled, quieted self is experiencing the soul's repentance, a spiritual purging of sin in the light. After this time, your soul, less tainted by the sin of being wrongfully involved with thoughts, will be able to approach psychological complications and compulsions and understand them out of existence. Through understanding, you will become more settled in your thoughts. Understanding the past errors in the present light takes the fear out of the future. Things are not as hopeless as you thought they were. Only in your thoughts are things hopeless. It is the light from God that makes you conscious of what is wrong. Do not affirm a wrong as a wrong as if you were God. Don't give yourself positive commands such as, be patient, be better. Realize error. Realize the need for improvement and patience. Do not seek comfort and sympathy from anyone or anything. Your mistakes will then become clearer to you. Be sorry. Wait to feel true comfort beyond the sadness for what you have done wrong. Abandon any image you may have of how a wife, husband, son, or daughter should be. Abandon also what you expect to receive from playing your role. Watch resentment leave and real concern enter, concern for the well-being of others instead of yourself. Don't idolize the author of these words or take on these words or the image of his goodness or his knowledge. You must not commune with or find comfort from him or any other person imagined in your mind. What you hear now is not to be stored word for word in your memory. It is meant to spark a recognition. Recognize principles, but don't commit them to memory, otherwise your heart will remain unchanged, justifying evil, selfish motives with lofty principles. Catch yourself in stubborn mental habits until they break down. Simply be aware of what it is that should not be thought or done, as it begins to occur to you. Become very aware and alert. Now open your eyes.